and welcome. We are so glad that you're spending your love day with us today. It's another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Thrilled to have with us a Bloomerang representative, Lisa Gonzalez. And Lisa serves as the Senior Product and Marketing Manager with Bloomerang. She's here to talk about falling in love and keeping your most generous donors. So Lisa's got some great insight that she's going to share with us. But before we pass the mic, we like to remind all of you who we are if we haven't had the opportunity to meet you quite yet. So Julia, you are here looking fantastic on this Valentine's Day. Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. We are so very honored to have the continued support of these amazing sponsors. They pour their love into us and we get to pour our love into all of these conversations. Shout out of gratitude to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, where Lisa and I met last year. We'll look forward to seeing you again this year. 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. So we are so honored to have the continued support from these sponsors. They allow us these conversations. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, we've got you covered. So go ahead and scan that QR code. You can download the app. You can also still find us on broadcast and podcast channels. So wherever you like to stream your entertainment, go ahead and queue up the nonprofit show. Though, Julia, we're still working on that hologram, aren't we? Yeah, but you know, it does freak me out because you you can speak into your smart remote like oh, yeah. you know, during the Super Bowl and we will come up. It is super kooky. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah we're not we're quite sofa. We're not quite Usher, but you know, we're we're still a lot of fun. Roller skating around, <laughs> whipping our shirts off. Yeah, with our roller skates. Well, Lisa, we are thrilled to have you uh, join us today. And again, for all of our viewers and listeners around the globe, today we have a representative uh, from Bloomerang. Her name is Lisa Gonzalez, where she serves as the Senior Product Marketing Manager at Bloomerang. Welcome to you, Lisa. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk about this topic today. Yeah. You know, this is one of those things I think so many people just are like, if we can just find the wealthy people in our community, all our problems will be solved, right? And yeah. it's, I mean, it's shocking how how much you hear this in the boardrooms, even within organizations. It's just like this go-to, if wishes were fishes, we'd all have a fry kind of mentality. And I'm really excited to kind of have you talk to us about this, but let's mm -hmm. start off with identifying the anatomy of a generous donor today is the day of love we're talking about hearts yeah i love it jared's got the heart thing cooking what does this look like and what does this even mean yeah so i guess when i am looking at a donor i look at three things and i break it down into a mental model that's really easy to understand and that is is a donor ready willing and able so when we're talking about, are they ready? Are they engaged? Are they highly involved? Are they responding to your emails, coming to your events? Um, that would make them highly engaged. If they're willing, are they giving? Do they have a history or track record of giving? Uh, basically, their generosity. And so that's really the secret here. And able is that wealth uh, capacity. So I like to say just because someone's wealthy doesn't mean they're generous. They could have a lot of money, but they're just not givers. And the people that you want to look for are both generous and wealthy. And those ready, willing, and able kind of comprise that perfect donor um, that that you want to focus on. Yeah, I, I that. appreciate that so much. Yeah. And I, I love Julia because how many times have we heard, you know, throughout our, our careers, and I'm putting all of us in this conversation, well, so-and-so lives in our community and they have lots of money. Let's just call them. And essentially what I hear is let's call them to solve all our problems. And it's like, just because this person has money, trust me, they're on a lot of people's lists. And they get approached by a lot of different people and organizations. But that to me is the absolute worst and wrong way to go about it. Yeah. 
but we hear it all the time. All the time. And, and it is, it, it's got to be exhausting for those people because everybody's saying that. Yeah. I, I, I get really tired when people say that about me. <laughs> you know? I, know, I feel badly, but you know, you know how to talk about this, this, this content then today. So let's get into the secrets of a savvy fundraiser then, Lisa, because when we're talking about this and kind of coming to um, the wealth market from a different point of view, talk to us about personalization and segmentation. Sure. I think we need to start out with sort of, you know, what are the attributes of your segment? So you have those ideal donors um, that are, they have a high generosity, high engagement. So they're giving a lot. They're already involved. Those are the people that you should be targeting right away. But there are uh, three other segments that are super valuable that I think that people can tend to overlook. And one of those is high generosity, low engagement. So I like to call mm -hmm. those prospective patrons. So those are the people who are might be giving you know, pretty regularly, but they don't have that hands-on engagement. They don't have a lot of interaction with your organization. And those are people who could actually be cultivated into an ideal or major donor. So think about those people. If you bring them to your events, if you bring, give them a tour of your facility, take them on a ride along, you know, with your cause. It's been proven that when people have that firsthand interaction, it releases those joy chemicals. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about like that connection, having that firsthand interaction really like makes them more connected to your cause. Mm -hmm. And it increases their engagement. And so those people, you can cultivate them into an ideal or major donor. Mm -hmm. Then there are those people who are maybe low generosity, high engagement. And that's not to say that they're not generous, but maybe they're just not giving as much as they potentially could. So think about your volunteers. You mm -hmm. might have volunteers who have hands on every single day. They're having those connections, those fantastic love hormones pulsing through their body, but you just maybe haven't asked them to give. And they might not have a lot of give to give, but we find that there are people who don't necessarily have a, a lot of money, you know, a lot of income, but they're highly generous when it comes to those um, missions that they're very passionate about. So we see people give quite a bit of their income when they're passionate about animals. Yeah. So think about those people and cultivating them into maybe monthly donors. So think about if you had a thousand donors that you could get even $5 a month out of what a transformational impact that could have on your organization. So right. they might not ever be a major donor, but they could, you know, <laughs> create a really nice new revenue stream that you might not have considered before. And then my favorite one, uh, the one that I think tend to people tend to overlook is low generosity, low engagement. So I'll tell you a personal story um, about uh, about my experience. Sorry, my dog is deciding she doesn't want to be with me anymore. Um, <laughs> Chairman but, of the um, board. <laughs> so yeah, there, there are two um, organizations that I'm very passionate about here in San Diego. And one, I've had a connection with my family for a long, long time, and I give pretty regularly to them. Um, but they never reach out and say thank you. I, in fact, I don't even know if they got my donation or if they even appreciate it. Um, and then, you know, if you've ever had a friend who says, you know what, I'm doing this fundraiser, it's for my birthday, but you're not really connected to the cause. And I'm like, you know what, I want to support my friend. Right. I don't know about the cause, but, you know, I'm going to do it for my friend. Well, this particular organization thanked me in such a way that I was like, wow, I felt really valued and it made me feel good inside. Mm -hmm. And the more I gave, the more they thanked me, the more they, you know, said, told me, they sent me these heartfelt videos about like how much my donation meant. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, hey, do you want to maybe come and like check out some of our events? And I was like, I totally do. So those are people that could be cultivated into volunteers if you just reach out to them in the right way and make them feel valued. So those are kind of the four segments. We call this a generosity quadrant mm -hmm. um, and a way that you can engage those different uh, segments of people and cultivate them into 
you know, someone who volunteers or gives even more to your organization. So that's what I think about when I'm thinking about segmentation. Yeah. Lisa, thank you for those yeah. stories. I love them. And that there's, they were so opposite. Can we get a little nerdier? I want to yeah. talk about this generosity quadrant. And yeah. I, again, I, I've been so honored, blessed, privileged to have my hands in a lot of, indiv- a lot of organizations, donor bases. And I also look at soft credits because I see that there's some donors that they themselves may not give at a high dollar amount, Mm -hmm. but holy heck, the Mm -hmm. amount of influence that they have on soliciting, securing, galvanizing support is just off the charts, right? And it's like, I will see a soft credit report from one donor where maybe they gave, gave a small amount. But the list is like, you know, it looks like a a CVS receipt. (laughs) It just goes on and on and on. Uh, Can you talk to us about the generosity from individuals when they are willing to tap into their own networks? Oh, sure. So those people, you know, it's, it's interesting because just people who, I'm trying to think of how to put this. It's not always about the dollar sign. It's about those people who have influence about the people around them that are sort of these people who are very passionate and they're kind of those people that they say, I've got this really cool thing. They're kind of the go-to person when you're like, Hey, I want to know something. Um, But they have the opportunity or they have the charisma, I guess, to galvanize the people around them. And I would put them in those kind of passionate champions because they're not, they're not giving a lot, but they, they are, <laughs> they're mm-hmm. inspiring people to give. And so we call those people kind of super supporters. Um, those people who really have a passion for your organization and that are willing to spread the word and be advocates and, um, just be a representative and, and pull people in. Yeah. So Jared, let Absolutely. me ask you this question. How do you, what are you tracking and how is that tracked? Cause that's, a little, um, you know, it, it's not hard data to the extent. I agree with you, Jared, 100%. These are the champions that that bring in major impact. Um, but but what is the, what is it that you think is best tracked with that type of a person? Well, I think it goes back really, you know, to the Benavon model, which I'm sure all of us here and many of our viewers and listeners know it as well. And it really is that champion, whether it's an event and it's a board member typically that serves as the host of the table. And then they invite people to attend the event for free. Those individuals start making a donation, an entry point donation, and therefore maybe they have a similar experience to Lisa. They are so wowed. They felt so appreciated for their gift and they continue to give. So the soft credit takes a little extra elbow grease, but it is worth all the elbow (laughs) grease, Mm -hmm. I believe, you know, that, that Mm -hmm. it takes to, to capture that data and then to be able to pull it because then you can say to this individual, your gift of X amount and your influence of X amount, right? Like it's just Mm -hmm. exponential in some of these individuals. But that Mm -hmm. seems really hard to track. That no. seems really hard to quantify. You don't think so? Not at all. Okay. No, not once you put your best your best practice in, right? And it, okay. it's just part of your SOP, your standard operating procedure. Mm-hmm. Um, once you understand it, then it's just, it's habit. Okay, good. Because yeah. I think it's a really something we miss. It's often yeah. missed, but it, yeah. it doesn't have to be. And it's mm-hmm. a very, I think it's an easy fix. Cool. It's a, it's a real, it's an interesting <laughs> thing. I mean, Lisa... You see that too. I've got to believe that there are a lot of people. It's like you hear about the the school teacher, the school librarian that passes away and they give, you know, $3.7 million mm-hmm. to. Yeah. Whatever. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not all about what we think, but it is about that, that prosperity model and, and thinking about, um, you know, how we cultivate that. And, and mm-hmm. I think it's a fine there was actually a situation where uh, here at Bloomerang where we saw this volunteer was volunteering very regularly and no one thought because they weren't donating, they were not, right. you know, giving small amounts every month. No one thought that they were very generous. Mm-hmm. And once they looked in some of the, their 
you know, giving history, that person ended up giving a quite a substantial amount to the organization. And that was like one of the things where I was talking to our sales team, I was like, can you see the value of just looking at people who don't appear to be wealthy, but they're very, very generous. Mm -hmm. And you look at that by looking at like, have they given the organization such as yours, um, you know, in high amounts. And you can see that in some of the data that we look at here at Bloomerang. So that generosity is really the key. Like just because they're wealthy doesn't mean they're generous. And just because they're not giving a lot doesn't mean they're not willing. So that ready, right. willing, and able, are they engaged? Are they, they have a history of giving and do they have the wealth capacity is really like a model that I think that people can understand and remember. Yeah, I love it. I think it's a really smart way to look at this. And I think it's a holistic way to look at it as well. And I think also, you know, it gets you away from like Jarrett said, if we can just get that one person, they're going to solve all of our problems. Mm, yeah. yeah, it, it might be, it might be, you know, a, a, a group of passionate champions of, you know, you know, you might get more monthly donors mm -hmm. and that could, that could be your, your big push for the year. <laughs> You know, right. and it and it's a more uh, predictable revenue stream for your organization as well. So think about that. Like major donors might give one one or two big ones, but think about like how to sustain that throughout the year and throughout your years as an organization, and making sure that you have that predictable revenue stream that you need to de reliably deliver your programs. Right. Absolutely, that that. Uh, forecasted okay. cash flow, the sustainer mm -hmm. donor has become very popular, right? Like that model, as you just mentioned, Lisa, is really where I feel a lot of organizations are pushing uh, the generosity, even to the point of having those big donors give throughout, you know, other parts of the year, not just mm -hmm. Q4, where they tend to, you know, make the donation, but we need those donations throughout every single month. And so how could we even change our narrative about, you know, the generosity and, and, and how can we use their dollars, you know, throughout the year, mm -hmm. uh, all of this, you know, the savvy fundraiser is thinking about that. Yeah. And think about, you know, you don't have to start them out at $25 a month. If you could just give right. them, you know, $5 a month. Like I think everybody could say, mm, I could afford that. And then throughout the year, you might increase, you know, ask them for an increase. Um, yeah. The other trend that I'm seeing with a lot of nonprofits right now is a lot of federal funding is being taken away. Like that pool is shrinking. And so a lot of organizations are not even considering how to diversify their revenue stream. They haven't even thought about tapping donors or like, what does that even look like? So one of the trends that we're seeing here at Bloomerang is a lot of those federal funds drying up and people not knowing what to do. And it's really sad. And we have such an, you know, it's not hard to do. You just start getting, getting people just to give a little bit a month and start growing your base and tapping those, um, those yeah. passionate advocates and just growing your base so that you have, once again, that predictable revenue stream and different ways of getting, sustaining your organization. Right. Absolutely. I'll add that today for Valentine's Day, right? I took a little extra elbow grease. And for one organization, all of their monthly donors, I sent a personal Valentine's message. And I looked at the I looked at the amount and you are spot on, Lisa. There are several giving it five dollars. But still this personal customized message today where it's not a bombarded day of, you mm -hmm. know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, which is typical, the bombarding days mm -hmm. <laughs> or giving <laughs> Tuesday, right? Things like that. It's like a little different day to spread some love and just to say thank you for your generosity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. And you can make up your own holiday too, you know? Yeah. Yes. I mean, like you you mentioned, Giving Tuesday is just such a big focus for a lot of people. But like, what about just making up your own holiday and giving like saying, hey, can you give five bucks today and see what that that does for your organization? It'd be a fun little bump for the year, a couple times yeah. a year, maybe. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about, you know, this, this concept of wealth screening. Um, I probably get a pitch once, sometimes twice a week. <laughs> different companies that, that offer this, that, you know, want to demo their products that feel like they can help unlock this treasure chest of information. Mm -hmm. What does this look like and why should we not be stymied and, and just so dependent upon yet again, this concept? 
Yeah, and I think I think there's a tendency, like you mentioned, to just think about people who have a lot of wealth capacity. But without looking at those generosity factors, like it really doesn't matter. So when we think about how to look at generosity, we look at things like, are they giving to organizations like yours? Are they giving, period? Are they even giving? And if they're not giving, thank you, have a nice day. But really look at those people who do have a track record of giving even a little bit um, and understanding, like we can look at data here at Boomerang and say, oh, they've given $10,000 to education, but they really give a lot more to, you know, animals or seniors or mm -hmm. what are those places where they give and focus on where they're giving generously to organizations like yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we go back and, and maybe for some of our viewers and listeners, they're not clear on what wealth screening is. Can you give us mm -hmm. a little broad description, narration around, you know, what wealth screening mm -hmm. is and maybe even why we in the nonprofit sector care? Yeah. So wealth screening can comprise a lot of things. There's a lot of databases that are, and I just want to make clear, most of those databases are publicly available information. You right. can find that on the internet. Right those wealth screening companies are just aggregating that data for you. So there's no invasion of privacy. There's nothing to be afraid of, like, oh, I'm prying into someone. It's all publicly available. Right. But they look at things like, um, like what are their, you know, what kind of real estate do they own? Are they, you know, an investor in a corporation? What are all those data points that tell, that tell someone that they're wealthy? Um, so it's, it's more about looking at, the things that people own um, rather than the ways people give. Right. Yeah. No, thank right. you. And in particular, the Bloomerang CRM um, mm -hmm. has two layers. We have a generosity scale, is if that's what it's called. And yep. it, it tells us who's hot, warm, cold. Um, there used to be report who's hot, who's not. Yes. Uh, I think that report might be uh, gone, but there's something similar to that. So there's that level, which really helps to capture the engagement of mm -hmm. the person. So going back earlier to our conversation with you, Lisa, the quadrant, right? Like yep. that helps to capture the engagement. And then there's a, a wealth screening uh, connected. And I don't know if that's with all versions, Lisa. Yes. Or, okay. So the great thing about Bloomerang is if you never pay for any additional data enrichment, at every level you purchase, it comes with predictive giving insights. So predictive giving insights is that combination of engagement rating, which you mentioned, it's cool, hot, you know, on fire, and generosity. And those are ratings that people can really relate to. So when we say cool, that means like, mm, they're probably not giving a lot. But if you have someone with an engagement rating of hot or on fire and someone with a generosity rating of hot or on fire, those are the people that you should focus on. And we call that combination of engagement plus generosity is the predictive giving insight. Yeah. And there is. So to make it super easy, we have a report. You don't have to do anything. You just, you, you can look at the, someone's profile and go, yeah. oh, they have hot and warm. That's nice. But how do you get that at scale? Easy. You go into the report. There's already a template pre-built. You say your, you know, hottest donors, you click on it and it will generate a list for you. And those are the people you should start with. Like mm -hmm. it, we make it so easy. You can do it in 30 seconds and start calling those people or create a campaign um, that specialized, you know, speaking to them the way they want to be spoke to. Mm -hmm. So you're going to want to talk to ideal or major donors very differently than you're going to want to talk to those passionate champions. Mm -hmm. um, so we make it very easy to get to focus on the right people so that you can spend your time on just outreach and calling the right people or creating campaigns you know, big campaigns if you have a gala coming up. One of the things I heard at, uh, at one of the conferences I attended was like, you know, we invite these people to the gala and they end up spending 10 bucks and you're sitting in the back room going, oh, I have the answer, I have the answer. And if they would just run a report like that, they would have their invitation list. Like those are the people you want to invite to your gala. So if any of you have gala season coming up, seriously, we make it so easy to, to curate that list for you. It takes 30 seconds and you're going to get such better results just by focusing on people's generosity, who have high generosity and high, um, high engagement. 
Lisa, I think you just got an invite back. And that episode is about creating your gala invitation list. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I know. I see it. I see it coming up. And I was like, we have a such a great solution for that that makes yes. it easy from everything from, you know, one to many campaigns. And then, you know, how do you, once those people, you identify those people, they come to your gala, they've given, now you want to have one-to-one -one conversations. How do you make sure that you have all the information you need to present the right opportunities? And we can talk about that in the next session, if you like. I would love to come back. Absolutely. Well, I think it's a really interesting thing that a lot of times we we see organizations don't have this realization, I get to use that word again, until after the event, after they've done all this yeah. work, they've spent all this money, they've yeah. burn their teams out they've gone through their volunteers and then they're like wow what happened you know mm -hmm. and so I really think this is a critical thing and again it, it's the same thing you know it's if we can just get the wealthiest people from our community in the ballroom you yeah know, Katie bar the door yeah. and, and or we, even invite those advocates like yeah they're magic <laughs> They are like you yes. mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Lisa, thank you for spending your Valentine's day with us. And my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I love talking about this all day long. Yeah. And I'm going to drop yeah. it to your wedding anniversary. So thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And I'll be at AFP icon. If anyone's going to AFP icon, stop by the boomerang booth and say hi. Um, and I can, show, we're going to have some sessions where we talk about this. I'll also be at some uh, shows here in San Diego. If anyone's in San Diego, uh, I would love to meet you in person. It'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I love it. Well, Lisa Gonzalez, Senior Product Marketing Manager for Bloomerang. Check out bloomerang.com. One of the things that is, I think, something that Jarrett and I really appreciate uh, about Bloomerang and our relationship is that it's not always about them. They really do a lot of thought leadership. They give a lot of information um, that's delivered on their amazing website. You do not have to be a client of theirs to get access to amazing training modules, amazing information, best practices, the things that are going on now that will help your nonprofit organization. Again, bloomerang.com. And Lisa, yeah, we got to have you come back and talk specifically about, you know, who is in the room, not just filling the room, mm -hmm. but who is in the room when you're looking at your gala. Um, again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett R. Ransom, CEO of the Raven Group. Again, we have, um, whoopsie, God, my, my <laughs> <laughs> going out of control. Um, we have amazing partners and they include Nonprofit Thought Leader, American Nonprofit Academy, Bloomerang Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Tech Talk, Nonprofit Nerd herself. I was ready. I was ready. <laughs> you got the glasses going, sister. And JMT Consulting. Um, these folks stand by us day in and day out and do amazing things. Um, and they are our champions. And so we are so very appreciative. You know, we sign out every day with the same mantra. And today is a day filled of love and gratitude and all things um, in that direction love and passion for our nonprofits. And so we leave everyone with this message and that is to stay well so you can do well. Lisa, Jarrett, thank you so much, ladies. It's thank been a delight. You. Thank you ladies so much for having me.